Welcome children. Today we're here to talk about the upsides and downsides of beam weapons and how different games interpret them. We'll be covering games from Doom Eternal to Terraria. Now, how we are specifically defining beam weapons is as follows. An energy weapon that when activated fires a continuous laser of some variety. So just to be clear, that means we're not talking about any weapon that fires the equivalent of energy-based projectiles such as stormtrooper weapons. This also discounts any weapons that fire for only a second or two. It has to be a continuous fire for as long as the weapon allows it. It does not matter if it's a beam that comes from a ship, in low orbit, a mech, or a gun as long as it shoots a continuous beam. Now, for example, in Titanfall 2, the charged laser does not count. However, Ion's ultimate ability does count. With that distinction out of the way, we shall carry on with the rest of the video. All right, now go ahead and spin the wheel of fate. We'll see which game we cover first. And it's Terraria, let's get started. This is one of the instances of a beam weapon being thoroughly effective overall. Being that the game is only 2D and not 3D, it makes the challenge of constantly having to aim at your target trivial in comparison to doing the same thing in a 3D game. When you pair this with the fact that most threatening enemies are the size of an M12 Abram, that makes keeping your cursor on them as easy as falling off a boat and hitting water. Don't forget to mention the fact that the last prism is one of Terraria's strongest weapons, especially when paired with a mage build and some mana potions, allowing you to fire for a very, very long time. You can make quick work of every enemy, from instantly vaporizing slimes and zombies to melting Moon Lord's HP pool. This weapon is also notable for getting stronger the longer you fire it, allowing for more damage per second. Now before we move on to the next game, we'd like to talk about one other notable theme for beam weapons, that being the tick rate or damage per second. Each game and its respective engine handles beam damage differently, so the effectiveness of the beam is partially determined by that as well. This makes it so that beam weapons feel extremely inconsistent on a game to game basis. A secondary on the second best class in Deep Rock, the Shard Diffractor, is a competent beam cannon that offers a fair bit of damage, armor penetration, and critical strike damage on weak spots. It's basically the engineer's go-to weapon, and will make some really good bug barbecue. Yes, and while this is all true, there is one important thing to note about this weapon. It eats more batteries than Queso on Tuesday. You have to conserve ammo when using this beast of a weapon. I also have to mention it looks a lot like a minigun, ripping off the gunner class a little bit there. There may also be one of the most damaging weapons in the game. While it technically doesn't have an upper limit to its damage potential, it will run out of ammo eventually, you know, kind of negating that. The longer you fire at a single target, the more damage it will continuously do. The only thing stopping you is not hooking up your gaming setup to the local power plant. To add to the fun, the developers decided to also add some splash damage to the weapon. However, aside from burning batteries faster than your vibrator, it also slows you down by 50% when using it. Oh, and if we bring up the overclocks as well, you can change the weapon in multiple different ways. Some have the enemies explode into splash damage after a while, and some turn you into a mobile turret, just like your hero Stephen Hawking, with a gun.
This is one of the most one-sided of all the beam weapons in the video. If you see any of these beams coming for you in either of the Halo Wars games, you're in for a very bad time. There are three main beams shared between both games, with a special beam in the first game. The three main ones are the Hunter Beam Cannon, the Locust Beam Cannon, and the Scarab Beam Cannon. The special beam cannon in question being the Prophet's Orbital Glassing Beam. Each of these beams have a special role to play with a different overall power level. The Hunter Beam, specifically, is meant for vehicle destruction. It was built to combat Ford F-150s that ride my ass with the high beams on. May they burn in molten slag. The Locust decided one day that they didn't like seeing your snot-nosed kid through the window and made a weapon that would blow your shingles through the air fryer and the pictures that you keep of your ex-wife into dust. Now, looking over at the Prophet Beam, this orbital fuck you wreaks massive destruction upon anything it touches. However, it costs more money than trying to buy every Fortnite skin so that your e-girlfriend will love you. Now last, but certainly not least, onto the Scarab's Beam. Or, as I like to call it, the victory lap. Because your opponent had had to have had a heart attack or a brain aneurysm in the middle of the match to allow you to get more than one of these things. Let me tell you, the Scarab's Beam weapon will absolutely obliterate nearly everything in the game. It's the equivalent to fighting America, and they bring out an aircraft carrier. There's nothing you can do at that point. Oh, one thing to note is the glassing beam does technically exist in Halo Wars 2, just as a commander ability. This is far more brief than what it is in Halo Wars 1. Looking like the light to the afterlife after you took a full bottle of your grandfather's dementia pills and the hat man gently guides you up the staircase, the gluon gun. It shoots out a beam of Casper vomit that, upon making contact with nearly everything in Half-Life, will destabilize organic or inorganic material at such an extreme rate that even the scientist that created it was scared to use it on living creatures. Yeah, this thing is fueled by depleted uranium-235. The offset to this gun is that the game gives you extremely little ammo. But, apparently the scientists weren't smart enough to leave uncontained uranium around the facility. This makes it so the gluon gun without cheats is a weapon you'll only typically use when backed into a corner. Or fighting a horde of, you know, strong enemies. But with a pull of the trigger, you can kill enemies faster than a squirrel in your engine bay right before starting to drive. It's very little cleanup compared to that. Raining down from the sky and bringing democracy to all creatures and things within our reach, Helldivers have been equipped with a massive arsenal of tools at their disposal. But we can all be honest with the fact that some are better than others. For instance, somehow smoke bombs and 380mm artillery barrage are in the same exact category of stratagems. Alright, now in this section of the video, we have a variety of beam weapons. A good one, a decent one, and two terrible ones. Let's take a good step forward with our non-crippled foot and talk about the orbital laser, or as I like to call it, God's Piss Break. Doing murderous damage and killing everything but the Strider by itself in a single deployment, even buildings are not safe from the wrath of the Pissmageddon. The only downside of this laser is its cooldown and limited deployments. On to the laser cannon. Some people say it's the best weapon in the game, but for most people they'll tell you it's mediocre. If you have the precision aim of a TF2 bot, then you'll be salivating over this weapon. You can quickly take out tanks, hulks, and even laser cannon turrets. Anything in the game will fall to you quickly. 
However, the worse you're aiming or positioning, the worse the weapon will be for you. As, even when compared to other weapons, you'll typically need much higher precision to take out big targets. Okay, and now we will move on to the disappointments. The scythe and the dagger. Now, while they are technically just weaker versions of the beam cannon, they take everything good and throw that shit out a window. Even if you can reliably hit weak points, there are things that do massively more damage in your arsenal. They don't even pierce any kind of armor, which you'd think a heat-based weapon would eventually melt through. Like how you use a magnifying glass against a rock. However, the game did not feel like working that way, sadly. They did decide to make robots out of reflective material and give the bugs a glass-based diet. This makes it so when shooting at anything that has the smallest bit of armor, the beam will just bounce off into the distance and kill Batman's parents three planets away. Here we have Advanced Laser Pointer Mark II. It is one of the hardest weapons to aim in Ace Combat 7, as you have to consistently keep your tiny crosshair on the target. All the while, you dip, duck, and weave incoming attacks such as missiles, flak, bullets, tank shells, lasers, whatever the fuck they're throwing at you. To be fair though, it does boast very good damage, if you have aimbot, of course, and keep in mind, it is not explosive like many on this list. It is only a single target weapon with no type of lock on, which leads to a scenario where you get one or two kills and then Enrique and his three tequila drinking friends snipe you out of the air with a wildly off target tank shell. Now, compared to something like missiles that can typically kill less armored targets in one hit, the laser pointer needs about three to five continuous seconds to kill a target. Now, one major upside of this laser is those glowing butt plugs you call flares do not affect this weapon at all, leaving you in a deep depression with all of your thoughts. Because if you miss or can't get a kill, it's a purely skill-based weapon. There's no one else to blame but yourself and Bill Cosby. Five dollar? Five dollar? Goodwill Halo weapons here. Here you go, sir. You are the proud owner of a suppressor. Oh, you, sir. You want to hear about the Sentinel Beam? Well, I'll tell you. This weapon has extreme range and shoots a beam of light nearly as far as the eye can see. Killing an enemy Spartan, you say? You could do that in two seconds flat. Well, at least they'll do that eventually. When you get good at aiming, the biggest bane of this weapon is fighting someone who can land consistent headshots on you with any other gun in the game. Oh, and by the way, you'll never know how this weapon shoots because it's different in every fucking game you use it in. Yeah, so we picked Halo 2 because yes, but also because it has arguably the worst version of the Sentinel Beam in all of Halo. There's two variants, the blueberry flavor being the superior option. Now by superior option, I want you to keep in mind that we're choosing between pickled pig feet and a limbo dancing in the field of cow manure. It's supposed to be one of the first and foremost weapons to break shields, and somehow, despite being forerunner tech, it's being lapped by covenant tech. Not doing an amazing amount of damage to shields or flesh. Oh, and on top of that, it has a single ice cube resting gently on top of its heat sink, meaning if you hold the trigger down for more than three seconds, the gun gets harder than your PC after playing Skyrim of 87 sex mods. So in short, it has shit damage, can't break shields, has very low ammo, and you can't even replace the damn ammo. Honestly, you'd have an easier time picking up a grunt and wielding it like a baseball bat than picking up a sentinel beam in most cases.
Whether it be a laser from the sky, just by being in a literal fucking dungeon, or a clump of meat that continuously shoots out blood. There are multiple beam type weapons in this game, ranging from playing patty cake with your uncle that just got out of jail, to putting on kitty knuckles and kicking down Wiki Berwick's house to go run the ones with them. The main thing about most beam weapons in this game is that besides damage being different between them, the biggest factor is status effects. Some deal in ice, some deal in fire, and others deal in weird combinations of multiple. There's even a beam weapon that does amazing damage, but it spreads poison literally everywhere you shoot it. So if you don't have poison immunity, you are just stuck in a room of death. Overall, I would personally rate the average tier of the beam weapons in this game at about C tier. With all of them, what they have in common is a decently large charge time and having to constantly keep a line of sight. Which yes, there are guns where you don't need to keep a line of sight. You need to do this also while dodging a mass amount of bullets. Keep in mind too, this game is a bullet hell. You will have to take cover, and line of sight is more important with these guns than it would be a revolver. Or a gun that shoots an egg that shoots chickens at home on you. Some of these weapons can be classified under gimmick weapons. For instance, there is one that specializes in bouncing off the walls. And there is no another one that is a homing beam Ghostbuster Ray that does very little damage but is basically impossible to miss. The problem, of course, on the other side you have is, like I said earlier, there's a beam from the sky that takes multiple seconds to charge up leaves behind a trail of fire dealing insane amounts of damage, and has a pretty good ammo pool. So overall, just as Enter the Gungeon should be, it's a dice roll whether you achieve Godhood or become Diogenes. Here we have Captain Quickshot, running into the battlefield and blowing its entire load in a matter of seconds. The microwave beam is a decent gun that makes it so you really don't have to aim. However, with, even with a full magazine after only a few seconds of firing this thing, you'll feel more empty than a fat man getting kicked out of a buffet on the fourth hour. It does good damage, but losing about 2 ammo every millisecond of firing this thing might inflict more psychological damage on the caster than the target. But as a moderate upside, when microwave beaming a creature, they are stunned in place. But of course you move much slower so you'll probably die while they're stunned. On top of everything, Keep in mind that this is an alternate firing mode of the plasma rifle. It replaces the heat blast when you switch to the microwave beam. The heat blast itself is able to stun and push back most enemies within melee range. Very useful if you don't have a charged blood punch. This weapon was so unbelievably terrible, sucking harder than Kirby in a back alleyway, that they had to give it its own special enemy to counter in the DLC. This makes the microwave beam seem like the special ed kid that you put in front of the TV while everyone else plays outside at recess to stop him from biting people. And it doesn't even go through fucking armor. Pinkies, why? Possibly a first of its kind. An energy tank that shoots a powerful beam cannon that is able to synergize with all nearby beam cannons. It's in the common category of, the longer I shoot you, the more damage you take. Given the fact that it can synergize, if you can defend a group of 20 or more of them, they can melt through just about anything in the game within seconds, as long as it's on the ground. Doesn't matter if it's a fortress or a giant super unit tank. If it's a target, it will die. However, as this is a video game, and we're not dealing with the Helldivers 2 balance team, there has to be drawbacks with extreme power. Despite being a tank, it's a very lightly armored one, meaning anything above 9mm can pierce through its armor. Basically this equates to if I don't have protection for these guys, or a metric fuck ton of them covering each other with some AA, 
I'm never even going to make it to the enemy before I get blown into background scenery and become some nice at atmospheric half-destroyed tanks. Another problem that can be somewhat negated is that if the enemy is more than 7 feet off the ground, they cannot be shot by these lasers. This leaves them extremely open to any aircraft trying to kill them. So no anti-air means complete death. However, if the stars align and you sacrifice your newborn to one of the Aztec gods, and your enemy does nothing but build extremely expensive, heavily armed mammoth tanks that can't focus fire the laser cannons fast enough, you can easily get a landslide victory. Contact beam. They call this because you have to be dumb, deaf, and blind to ever use this weapon. It does moderate damage and you have a better chance of seeing someone who plays Genshin Impact lose their virginity to someone above the age of 9 than find enough ammo to shoot this gun for more than 12 seconds. This weapon is not very viable at any of the harder difficulties above normal, and has one of the longer reload times in the game. This makes it feel like you're trying to fight back your alcoholic dad from beating you again with a super soaker. The stronger the necromorphs would simply walk through the beam saying I ain't no plant bitch before ripping your head off. Finally, has no real form of crowd control, so while you train enemies like COD Zombies, it'll take about 7 plus seconds to kill some of the medium necromorphs. This leaves you getting surrounded and pounded. Hey, who the hell let Captain Coffee in today? I did. Why? Coffee boy funny. The Q-Beam. A weapon that shoots a green laser that when hitting biological or mechanical objects will shoot out a stream of volatile quasi-particles that will cause a rapidly cascading excitation in energetic systems of matter to the point of rupture. Ooh, ooh, fancy. Where'd you learn all those big words? I didn't. I just read the gay-ass description we found on the weapon. Anyways, basically not including absolute nerd talk, when the green beam hits an enemy, their health bar will slowly start turning green. When you fill the health bar up, the enemy will instantly die no matter what it is. Now, you can't truly synergize with any other weapon, but you can to a degree. If you can lower the health bar to reach the green as it currently stands, the target will still explode regardless. As for the quasi blah 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 blah, the green effect on the health bar will slowly start depleting, making it so if your hard work can be undone just because you had to take cover for a little bit. You can also craft ammo for this thing in packs of 200 apiece. This is required, because 200 ammo only lasts you about 7 seconds, 10 if you upgrade it, which makes for an extremely expensive weapon in the long haul. Now, it can take out lesser and medium creatures nearly instantly, but when you're trying to take out the larger, more tanky creatures, it's going to take multiple batteries worth. So you might be wasting over 600 ammo on a single enemy at times. So by all terms, the shotgun is a better weapon by far. It does amazing damage and has one main thing the Q-Beam is missing, knockback. While shooting the Q-Beam, the enemy will just stare at you and either teleport to punch you in the mouth or start shooting psychic energy at you. And while shooting the Q-Beam, you move slower, so good luck dodging anything. There's only two more things to say about this weapon. That it runs off of energy, so it's very susceptible to electric attacks and EMPs. That will temporarily disable it. And, outside of the pistol, it is the only weapon that can hit enemies from a long range effectively. This makes it a decent weapon because of the lack of options within your arsenal for long range encounters. Now, at the end of the day, it really depends on the game whether the beam weapon is good or not. Overall, there are a few main tropes of beam weapons. They are usually decently strong, but also usually use a crap ton of ammo, or have problems of overheating or aiming. I'm still gonna say overall they ain't that good. Or they're the best weapons in the game.
some notable exceptions. Funny enough, pretty much all of them have the same two drawbacks. Having reduced movement when being a energy weapon, and despite being a precision weapon, its main counter is most other weapons with large amounts of precision and power per shot, aka getting critically hit while you cry. Thank you for joining us on yet another video. If you have any ideas for videos on more shit takes that we have, let us know, and we might do a video on it.